So I'm going to close my finished scene. You don't need to save the changes. And then I have another instance of Unity running here. And this is a the same project, but I've just deleted some stuff so that we can set it up ourselves. And I'm actually going to close the tile palette here. And we're in the start scene. And we are going to begin by taking a look at prefab mode. So the way this works is that we're generating out of these prefab level chunks. Now, normally we would have had to drop them into the scene, make changes, apply those changes, go back and forth, right? In this case, we don't need to do that. So if we already have it in the scene, we can open it using this arrow here, and this opens it in prefab mode. And then we can go back up to the scene. Now we can also do it, I'm gonna delete this. We can also do it without dropping it in the scene at all. And this is kind of the recommended workflow. So you can just select it. You can choose open prefab. You can also just double click the prefab. So this opens it in prefab mode. So prefab mode is a lot like the scene view but just focused on a single prefab. And you can actually, if you wanna kind of define a custom scene background for this, you can. And so here I've got one of my level chunks, right? We've got some coins and trees and waterfalls. And what we're gonna focus on today is adding in our enemies and setting those prefabs up in a way that works for us, considering that these level chunks are going to be generated at runtime, right? So now that we see that we can edit things in prefab mode, let's take a look at nested prefabs. So we're going to start by adding in, let's create this in the context of the level. Now, what's interesting is the context in which we create things really uh, is less important than before. So we're just gonna do it right here so we can kind of see it in context. So I'm just going to create a new empty object and we'll call this enemy waypoints. And I'm gonna create two waypoints. Let's see where this appeared. This is here. Okay, and let's just give this a quick icon. We'll give it a little red dot or pink dot. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create another empty object, which will be a child. And this will be called waypoint one. And let's also give this, we'll give this a pink icon like that. And I'm just gonna move it off to the side. And then we'll duplicate that. And this will be waypoint two. And so this now, we'll change the color, make it green, and we'll just move it over to here. And then I'm gonna take the whole thing and I'm gonna move it down. Now, so this will be our enemy. We'll patrol between these two waypoints and this will be a kind of a holder object for it. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make it into a prefab. So I'm gonna just grab it, drag it into the hierarchy. Now, it creates a prefab, right? This is a familiar workflow from before, but you can see now that this has now become a nested prefab inside level one start, right? The icon changes. This is something new, right? We can see these are all traditional game objects. This has become a prefab, and so it now has this blue prefab icon and can now be opened and edited in isolation, right? So let's work with it here in prefab mode, right? And notice we have this breadcrumb. We can go from any enemy waypoints back up to level one start, back up to the scene view, right? So what we want to do is we want to add the enemy behavior, right? And so the enemy behavior is in this enemy template base prefab. I've already set this up. And so this contains the transform, the rigid body, a circle collider, this reset player on collision script, which kills sort of kills the player or resets the player, and then our waypoint mover pathing script. So I'm actually going to temporarily take off this reset player script, because we're gonna use that as an example of uh, how we can work with prefabs later. And so what we're gonna do is we are going, so I've edited that right now, importantly, I've made a change, auto save here is on, right? So it's saved that change to the prefab asset, right? If this was off, we would have a save button that we could use. 
uh, but we'll keep autosave on. So I'm going to, and autosave being on is the default behavior, right? So let's go back up. Let's go into our enemy template base. Sorry, into our enemy waypoints. And I'm going to add enemy template base as a nested prefab. Notice it has the prefab icon, right? So it still retains its relationship to the prefab asset. I'm going to add that in as a nested prefab under enemy waypoints. And I'm going to reset the transform. And now this is going to be a part of this prefab as well as maintaining its own identity as an independent prefab. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up my, uh, I'm going to set up my waypoints, right? And you'll notice when I do that, and we'll look at this more in a bit, but what you'll see is that we get this blue bar that appears beside it, which means that there is an overridden change, which is currently only in this enemy waypoints prefab, right? So the enemy template base only has these fields assigned in this context, right? And we could go into the override menu and see it and compare those changes. And if we wanted, we could apply it back to the base prefab, uh, to the enemy template base, but we don't want to do that, right? Because the, those waypoints don't actually exist in that context. But we'll look at this more as we go. I just wanted to draw your attention to that.